is up everybody my name is danielle and welcome to the second episode of murder and coffee my arm candy today that's brian i got Husband. lucky i got lucky he is also the one that edits all my videos and his band the sky burns brighter is actually my theme song for my page the blackest eyes is the name it's amazing all right so What's up? Jake Bird. Who is he? The Tacoma Axe Killer. Is he uh, closely in relation to Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Any sort of relation? Chainsaw, axes? No. Okay. <laughs> so, the fucked up part about this whole story, babe, mm -hmm. it's he had 11 to 44 victims. Only 11 were identified. Okay. Between 1930s and 1947. That's some fucked up shit. Yeah. He was arrested on October 30th, 1949 in Tacoma, Washington. He was a transient. And the reason he was arrested was due to the fact that he broke in, bludgeoned, stabbed, and raped uh, Bertha Clutt. And her daughter Beverly, who That's was 17. Messed up. I've met some transients. They can be some weird, weird folk. They are. They're like a breed of their own. I met, I met one with moobs once. Was that the one that's downtown? Yeah. I met one yeah. with moobs, and he was being really freaky on I gave him $30 anywhere. to do the truffle shuffle, and he did it. Hell yeah. It was worth it. Should have filmed it. It was before the camera, and like uh, 10 years before I met you. Oh, well. Okay. All right. So, pretty much what happens is leaves home at 19, lived in Louisiana, works on the railroad to continue a transient lifestyle. That's how he stalked his prey. His exact words. He stalked his prey. Prey. Followed yeah. him for a while, then... And then he would rape him and rob him and kill him. Rape him in the trains? No. In the towns. While he was working on the trains. But this is the one that caught everybody's attention. And the reason it caught everyone's attention is how he was captured. And how was he captured? So, <clears throat> two officers... Uh, Andrew P. Sabotis and Evan Skip Davies at 2.30 in the morning are dispatched to the Klutz's home because of screaming and just a lot of unknown noises. Neighbors have never heard from the home. When they arrive, a barefoot man is running out the back door and straight through a fucking picket fence. So was he naked or just barefoot? Barefoot. I'm not sure if he was caught with his pants down. That's Probably comes, by the daughter. That's what comes to my head is barefoot, <laughs> walking out naked. They're the same thing. And he was he like a naked, another Saturday. a naked ninja walking out the back. <laughs> right. Just like that viral video of that naked dude downtown getting trying to get taken down. The cops couldn't get him, tasing oh, him. And he's like a that video. fucking wet noodle. I love that video. He just like fucking slumped and then he's like, like did some flips and moved his <laughs> way through shit and got away from the cops even after getting his nuts tased. You know, and the fact that he still got away. Yeah. They A tased genius. him and then he jumped up and went again. Fucking insane. Drugs, I tell you. Drugs. So we were back to the point okay. where he got his pants caught down with the daughter. By the daughter. Okay. So, <clears throat> after scaling, like, many yards in the neighborhood, backyards in the neighborhood, jumping many fences, he's finally stopped at a really high fence. Can't climb a fence if you don't have your fucking shoes that you left at the crime scene. He better learn that shit real quick. Motherfucker's getting caught. Man, it's always, like, you get in that comfort zone, and then all of a sudden, you do the one fucking thing. One thing. And you always get caught. Karma's a bitch. For real, though. 
Let's hope when you get caught, the bitch is beautiful. Aww. I kind of threw up a little bit. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> so, <laughs> at that point, he pulls out a jackknife and then went to attack the officers. He got Davies' hand and stabbed Sabatis in the shoulder. Well, <laughs> Sabatis is a former heavyweight boxer. Okay? Knock his ass out. His boxing name was Tiny Lamar. Mm -hmm. He subdued the assailant with a left hook to the jaw and a kick to the groin. Gotta do what you gotta do. For real, though. Get the job done. <laughs> so the cops are sent to the hospital. Uh, Davies, minor cuts on his hands. Bandaged it. Sent out. Sabatis, he was admitted to the hospital for the wounds. If you think about it, like, jackknife, like, there and there, Ugh, you're yeah. fucked. Yeah, that's not good. Like, you think our kids' talons are bad? Oh, those things are bad. Luca's they talons. They got nothing. Got on nothing. Jackknives in, like, right there. Ugh. Twice. Once there. And there. I'm gonna have to beware if you get a jackknife. You'll know exactly where to take me out. <laughs> I'm to sleep with one eye open. Oh, I'm not that bad. So, other officers enter the home of Bertha, who's 52, a widow. Mm -hmm. And she's dead in her bedroom, which is like kitty corner from the bathroom or kitchen. The kitchen, bathroom. Mm -hmm. I saw the crime scene photo that they took. Like, it went bedroom, kitchen, bathroom, daughter's room upstairs. How bad were the photos? They were pretty fucking, like, you couldn't really tell because black and white. It was before oh, Technicolor came out. So, all you see are, like, black masses. Oh. And because of all the shadowing and the flash from the camera, you don't really see the wounds. No. It was kind of depressing. So, then the body of her daughter, Beverly, who's 17, was on the kitchen floor. They've been bludgeoned to death with the axe after being stabbed numerous times. Oh. They believe that Beverly came down downstairs from her bedroom when she heard her mother scream and the scuffle began. Uh-oh. So she's collateral damage. And that's when they realized that the mom's uh, clothes, her pajamas were down and off. So he got freaky with, got a little freaky he tried. before he killed somebody. He tried. All I gotta say is he said it was gonna be an easy burglary and all he took from her was a dollar fifty from her purse, which in nineteen forty seven that's like fifty bucks to us. Yeah. And fifty bucks to us is pretty gnarly. Fifty bucks to us is like a trip over to smoking my own pizza. Oh god, yes. Or Trader Joe's. They're buffalo strips. Mm. They're on point. That's on fleek. <laughs> Did we ever find out what clout? If anybody knows what clout is, please leave it in the comments please below. Please do. We have been trying to figure this out for what a month now. About a month. About a month. And we're what the fuck clout? Is? And we're refusing to go to Urban Dictionary. <laughs> we, we just we just want to answer from someone who uses that term frequently to let us know what clout means and use it in a proper sentence. The spelling. Please. Pronunciation. <laughs> I don't know. We need to know what it is. Okay, so. Gets caught. And so four jurors were excused due to being on a previous homicide trial that he was in. Oh, so he's a normal. He's a regular. I don't know. I think it was like years before. It doesn't really say. Uh, but what happened is his 
defense lawyer on November 14th, when the trial was getting ready to go, he requested a change of venue because the case was so popular. So he wanted to go somewhere where they didn't know him. Yeah. And he didn't think that his client was going to get a fair trial due to him being black. Oh. First days of using the race card. Back then, it was way worse. Yeah, that was back with segregation and all that shit. Uh, and then he also asked to be relieved as the attorney. Because he wanted to defend himself. Mm -hmm. Judge Shreve denied his ass. On both. <laughs> So the trial began a couple days later, as scheduled, and it only took three days. That's it for the murder trial. Then he was convicted? He was convicted. Bon voyage. You know how long it took them to convict him? Deliberation was only 35 minutes. They found him guilty and requested the death penalty. Did he get the death penalty? Yes. Bird was sentenced on December 6th of 1947 and was to be sent to the gallows January 16th of 1948. Fucking gallows. But there's more. Let's hear it. Pretty much what happens is <clears throat> he ends up fighting this and earns another, like, Six months. How could you fight it? You got caught at a crime scene with... No, another year. Barefoot and, like, your pants down. The fact that it wasn't a fair trial. Oh. That's what it was. So, what they do is they go ahead and appeal after appeal after appeal after appeal. Nothing changes. The governor actually says, okay, here's what we're going to do. You get six weeks. So, at 12.20 a.m. on January, or on July 15th, 1949, hmm. uh, took him 14 minutes to die. 14 minutes? 14 minutes by hanging. And he was buried in an unmarked grave in the prison in Walla Walla. Did he get pointers from Epstein? Bro. Okay. First off, that's another podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I had to throw it in there. The only identification on his tombstone mm -hmm. is his inmate number 21520. They didn't give him his name? No. Convicts weren't considered people at that point. That's fucked up. Just saying. It is pretty fucked up, but hey. Well, shit happens when you party naked. Yeah, they're called children. Yes. So, Bird went ahead and he willed his personal fortune of $6.15 to his appeals attorney, Murray Tigert. Now, ready for some fun stuff? Let's hear it. Let's hear all the fun stuff. I'm down for fun. The Jake Bird Hex. He hexed these bitches. He hexed them? Like some Wiccan shit? Uh, yeah. Pretty much what happened is he said, anyone and everyone. Oh, hey, look, I have the quote right here. Um, anyone who was connected to the case, all you guys who had anything to do with this case are going to die before I do. It became known as the Jake Bird Hex. So but did they die? Oh. Edward Hodge, the judge who denied the fair trial, uh -huh. died January 1st of 1948. Are any of them due to antifreeze and drinks or food? No. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm assuming, like, heart attacks, stuff like that. Um, and then we have Joseph Kerpoch, the undersheriff, who pretty much beat him up in the cop car. He died April 5th of 1948. George Harrigan, the court reporter, died June 11th of 48. Mm -hmm. Sherman Lyons, the detective lieutenant on the case, mm -hmm. October 28th of 48. 
James Selden, his defense attorney, who tried to get him a fair trial and then pretty much just fucking gave up. Yeah. November 26th, 1948, which I think that was actually a Thanksgiving day, if I remember right. Probably. I think it was Thanksgiving, if I remember looking it up right. Hopefully he at least got his turkey and potatoes that day. Um, oh, I was right. Look, according to the news report, all the men died from heart attacks. Also, oh, too much gravy for that fool on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> a sixth man who was a death row guard at mm-hmm. Washington State Penitentiary died of pneumonia two months before his execution was done. He probably got it from him. So, yeah, no, nah, Jake Bird. He's an interesting buck. So, right about her. Um, when he was first in custody and he was pleading his innocence, he dropped the pose because he had brain matter, Dropped blood. the pose as in he did a dab to the judges or something <laughs> to, like, no, call, call like, them on their clout. Can we stop using the word clout? We don't even know if we're using it in the proper context. We'll figure it out eventually. I'm an Urban Dictionary. No, I'm not, because I hate Urban Dictionary. So... <laughs> He dropped the pose as in, like, was like, okay, I'm done acting. Let's mm-hmm. just fucking, it is what it is. I'm busted. Mm-hmm. So. With the brain matter, the blood, and his shoes. Brain in his shoes? What? And his shoes. Oh, okay. His shoes were still at the crime scene. Same okay. with the axe. Well, you ain't getting away from that. No, especially if they find brain matter in your fucking pockets. You had to have hit somebody hard to get brain matter in your pockets. What I want to know is if he used, like, the sharp end of the axe or the... The flat end. Yeah, where you can, like, hammer shit in. Yes, like, why would he get... Did he maybe take the brain as a souvenir? As some psycho? No, it probably... It's like that scene on American Psycho when he's like going fucking batshit uh-huh. crazy and blood and everything uh-huh. is going everywhere. It's probably what happened. It's like splish splash. I was taking a bath. This isn't Dahmer. <laughs> so he stalled the execution for almost two years, regaling police with his intimate knowledge of forty-four deaths nationwide. Should sure have wrote a book about it. He wouldn't have made fucking money anyway. Mm. Just like the last guy I talked about. He didn't make money. Nope. That's probably someone letting us know what clout's about. Oh yeah, it could be B4G. <laughs> At least 11 of the crimes were solved through Bird's confessions, starting with an axe murder of two women at Evanston, Illinois. Illinois. Other victims were confirmed in Louisville, Kentucky, Omaha, Nebraska, Kansas City, Kansas, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Cleveland, Ohio, Orlando, Florida, and Portage, Wisconsin. So, but he's also, like, this is the part where it really kind of fucks with me. Because Houston PD suspected Bird Mm -hmm. of murdering Miss Harry Richardson. Chicago authorities were curious about a body they retrieved from Lake Michigan that was weighted down. South of Kenosha, Los Angeles, south of Kenosha, Los Angeles detectives had their eyes on him for murdering a black youth and Jewish grocer. And New York City was tentatively, he was linked to the robbery and murder of a delicatessen owner. All of which, like, there are still many cold cases from back then. And I can bet you he was probably, like, one of them with more than half of them. So, while he was in jail, he was examined by psychiatrist. That must have been a fun trip to talk to. Dude, did I tell you I wanted to be a criminal psychologist? Yes. Yeah, I I live for this shit. I want to get into the brains of a killer. So they labeled him a psychopath 
deriving satisfaction from the sight of women cowering in fear. So, Bundy was listed as the same, but he was a sexual sadist. Um, Bundy was Bundy. He was on a whole new level. Dahmer is on a whole new level. They all have uh, their own, they have their own little yeah, pedestals of they do rankings on they where really they belong. Do. So, in the verified cases, most of his victims were female, most were white, and the majority had been killed with hatchets, axes, or axes in their own homes. Seems like he had a sexual problem. He's compensating, but no, that's Jake Bird. Uh, he, I swear, when I was reading this, it was like a whole new thing for me. Because you know me in the 1940s. Oh, you loved that era. If you could go back to that era, you'd probably move back. I would. Can we get a time machine? Time machine? Time machine that shit. We can do that. Go back to that time. Then we could also meet some mobsters. Mm, you'll lose me to Dillinger. I know. Just saying. <laughs> all right. So, I got all this information off of Murderpedia, and you can also look it up on Listverse, True Crime Museum. They have a lot of good ones. Um, and if you Google Jake Bird, You'll be surprised at what you find. Like, the Wikipedia page? Nah, it's all right. But I'm all about Murderpedia. That's where you find everything. Um, once again, shout out to my husband. And shout out to my wife right here, who did awesome research for this. She's the mastermind behind this. <laughs> kind of. It's just two decades worth of research. So, not much at all. No. So, do you have any shout outs you want to do? Uh, shout out to, I already gave my shout out to my wife for doing awesome research for this. And shout out to all the crazy podcasts that she listens to that I refer them to as the bitches. Because it's usually these crazy girls talking. I think it's uh, my favorite murder. So, yeah, they gave her some good inspiration for this. They did. I don't need to edit myself. It's amazing. Nope. Makes me feel good. What about you, honey? Um, I watched this crazy ass documentary the other night. It was the lost tapes of 9-11. Oh, yeah, I heard you listening Shit's to that. Insane. Like the people that were speaking in like the recorded conversations uh -huh. were crying. Oh yeah, because they doubt were it. reliving it over and over and over and over. Something that's never gonna leave your head. No, it takes years of therapy. I swear. Uh, and if you haven't checked it out yet, look up the show "I Am a Killer" on Netflix. They interview death row inmates. It's pretty legit. It's really good. Uh, you get the victim's family side, the family side of the defendant. It's amazing. Um, remember to subscribe, comment, share. Uh, if you have any sort of like ideas you'd like me to do, like story wise, um, let me know. I cover a lot of cases. Like I will sit here. All my days off, and that's all I do. I won't see her for hours. Yeah. I hide out at my desk, or I take my computer to our bedroom. Yep. And watch SG-1 while I do it. All right, guys. Once again, I'm Danielle. And I'm Brian. My arm candy. And I will see you guys next week on Murder, Murder and, and Coffee. Coffee.